Welcome to Chris Cast, Season 2, Episode 27. There's no crying in baseball. Which is to say that uh, just because you feel like you deserve something because you're a good person, or just because you feel like you deserve something because of the arc of history um, moves towards justice, that is not the way the world works. So it's important to make prudent and cautious plans while dealing with national American politics rather than hopeful plans based on assumption. I'll be right back to you after the message. Welcome back to Season 2, Episode 27 of Chris Cast. This is going to be really quick. Um, I just feel like there are a lot of mistakes that have been made over the last six years by the Democrats, and they all are based upon what is morally just, what is normal, as in norms and values, what is traditional, and all the other things that actually uh, should only be important to conservatives. Things like norms, values, tradition, and the Constitution uh, are um, where the Republicans conservatively list and live in their narrative. It's not where uh, the Democrats traditionally live. Um, liberals, lefties are supposed to be uh, revolutionary are supposed to be disruptive, if only based on the passions of the of the modern world with regards to disruption and pivoting. It should be more than obvious that putting putting all of one's eggs into one basket is just a very terrible idea, and it proves positive uh, that. Saint Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was was surely uh, one of the most important turning points in the uh, in women's empowerment and women's equality, should really have um, have seated her seat in um, sh- should really have seated C E D E uh, her seat in the Supreme Court during the first. Obama term in office uh, definitely should have seated her seat, relinquished her seat by year two or three in the second Obama term, which would be his lame duck term. Um, and Obama really should have gotten, uh, should have forced the release or begged the release of of Ruth Bader Ginsburg before losing the, the Senate to Republicans. And the Senate has been dominated by the right ever since. So that was a terrible decision. And now we have um, Justice Breyer, who's 83, and who's the next person who is going to be assumed to, to uh, pass away. Uh, and who knows whether or not he'll be able to survive the second uh, Trump White House. Um, what, what's going on now is, uh, what is the saying? Hey Google, what is the saying by Martin Luther King Jr. about the arc of history? On the website quote investigator.com, they say, once said, let us realize the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. Now the key word in that quote is the the moral universe is long. Um, obviously, every single one of my friends from Renaissance Week and every single one of my friends who I know have verified IQs over 150 uh, just assume that being on the right side of history 
uh, offers any empowerment towards that history being realized. Um, I believe that they might in their, uh, I'm, I, I'm an aphant with amphantasia, which means I cannot see images in my head or movies or colors or anything. I dream in color, but I do not have a, an imagination if, the, if that imagination requires images in my head. And I believe that when they pop up the Martin Luther King quote, Hey Google, what is the quote by Martin Luther King about the arc of history? On the website obamawhitehouse.archives.gov, they say, Martin Luther King Jr. reminded us that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. Change takes a long time, but it does happen. Now, change doesn't mean for the good. And it doesn't mean that the arc is short. And it doesn't mean that the arc will be within our lifetimes. And it doesn't, and I believe that the quote misheard uh, actually in the memory and in the imagination uh, doesn't include that the arc is long, only that the arc is just or moves towards justice. Now, if you ask a Republican, he's not going to say, I am an unjust person. It is the Democrats who are just, and that's too expensive to be just. So I therefore am unjust and am willing to hold my nose and be ter a terrible person in order to uh, thwart the justice that um, the left is is attempting to pass uh, for the goodness of the earth. I believe that most people on the right believe that um, the world is fine, that uh, changes need to be incremental, that progress for its own sake is hubris, and all the other things. And they believe that their history is beautifully defined by an originalist interpretation of um, of the Constitution. And I dare say that a lot of conservatives and right-wing people, whether or not they authentically believe in a higher power or, or authentically when they, when they bend their knee and pray uh, in their heart of hearts are praying to a deity, to a Jesus, to a Mary, to a God, to a Moses, to, to a Muhammad, peace be upon him, or whether or not they're just doing it for uh, virtue signaling. But I know in my heart, I'm a, a, a believing uh, Episcopalian Christian. I've never had any visions of God or heaven or Jesus or anything, but I, I see that grace in my life all the time, uh, especially in the faces of other people that I, in, 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 in blessings that I don't deserve. Um, and so by dismissing constantly, uh, the belief in the higher power, the belief in, uh, sky, sky, sky daddy, or whatever other type of offensive comment that is being made against uh, people of faith, that, in my opinion, is isn't um, an arc towards justice. Only if you define uh, Christianity as a war against people uh, that has resulted in death and abuse and rape and perversion and so forth. And and I could definitely say that about any human. I can definitely say that about uh, America's constant war. I mean, we don't get re reports of, uh, of inhumane treatment or rapes or, or any type of those sort of things. But I think since the Vietnam War, um, the United States has done a masterful job of, of uh, making sure that those stories do not reach the light of day and certainly do not result in the mainstream media. So, if you ask a Republican, even with his guard down, he is not going to tell you that he is actually a devious, uh, perverted mastermind who is using uh, a belief in religion, Jesus, and the church as a as a as a smokescreen to fool his parishioners and the gullible in the world. And in fact, he uh, all he wants is you know filthy lucre and to destroy people and to make people unhappy. Um, that's might, that might be how it's perceived, uh, surely, but in his heart of hearts, no 
monster, no Hitler, no, um, what is the term? I love the term. Um, no omnipotent genius. Uh, what is it called? Um, oh, what is the term? Uh, from, uh, Descartes, uh, for for nefarious uh, godlike entity who's trying uh, forever to convince you that reality exists. Anyway, there when when a when a monster like Mussolini or Hitler or Pol Pot looks into the mirror, they see a righteous man. They see a man who is doing making the hard decisions uh, in order to protect the largest amount of his people, people who he identifies with his culture his community and whatnot. And I believe that that is what uh, the Republicans are doing now with regards to uh, the Supreme Court and the federal courts and every court that the president has um, the ability to appoint. Hey, Google, what courts does the president of the United States get to appoint? Sorry, I didn't understand. Hey, Google. What judges can the president appoint? On the website uscourts.gov, they say, Supreme Court justices, Court of Appeals judges, and District Court judges are nominated by the president and confirmed by the United States Senate, as stated in the Constitution. Ouch, right? Ouch. All it takes is the Senate and the president to, uh, to confirm any judge from the Supreme Court, Court of Appeals, and the District Court. So, that's it. It has nothing to do with the dying words of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, God bless her, RIP, rest in peace, beautiful lady. It does not base itself on, on um, precedence or historical imperative or interpretation. It's just what the Constitution says, and Republicans are more likely to believe that the Constitution is a strict originalist document, and they might and often times interpret the Bible as a strict orthodox interpretation, originalist interpretation of the text. So it doesn't matter what has come to pass. It doesn't matter promises made. The only commitment that anybody has in a government that follows the U.S. Constitution strictly is that the president nominates and the Senate votes and chooses. Um, it doesn't matter what should happen, what the moral imperative is, or, or really, it's not the Republicans' fault at all that um, ACA and DACA and... Um, and even even the abortion laws might be uh, might be dismantled because this could have been prevented by Ruth Bader Ginsburg and even Justice Breyer making some better decisions uh, while they were younger and when they were getting notices as to the deterioration of their health. I believe that to stay in office past eighty is a an extreme sign of hubris. Um, and defiance and hubris and defiance often come cometh before the fall. Uh, pride. Hey Google, what's this? What's the quote? Uh, pride cometh before the fall. On the website writingexplained.org, they say origin of pride comes before the fall. The original quote from the King James Bible is pride goeth before destruction and in haughty spirit before a fall. Some theologians interpret this to mean that a proud person will be condemned to hell. Or a proud person will be condemned to uh, uh, conservative leadership in America for the next 20 to 30 years, which might be even worse, since most liberals that I knew, especially my friends who have uh, above 130, 135, 140 IQ, uh, believe that a uh, theory of hell, theory of God, theory of faith, theory of Jesus, theory of anything, uh, is uh, is balderdash. And on that note, we will go to another break, and we'll come back with the uh, aloha and mahalo. Thank you.
Welcome back. This is Chris Cast, Season 2, Episode 27. Uh, that's what I believe. That's what I believe. Uh, I believe that... Uh, hey, Google, what's the phrase, if wishes were fishes? On the website english.stackexchange.com, they say... If wishes were fishes, we wouldn't have to work, or simply, if wishes were fishes, we'd all be rich. Or it might be specific to your situation. If wishes were fishes, we wouldn't have to drive these damn trucks for a living. Hey, Google, what is the saying, if wishes were horses? On the website dictionary.com, they say, for example, Wendy would love a brand new car for her 16th birthday, but if wishes were horses... This expression is a shortening of If Wishes Were Horses, Beggars Would Ride, first recorded about 1628 in a collection of Scottish proverbs. Hey Google, thank you. I'm here to help. So, if wishes were fishes, then beggars would ride. I know I messed that one up, but I did that intentionally. You can reach me at chris at abraham.su. You can find me at chrisabraham.com, youtube.com slash chrisabraham, Instagram is chrisabraham, Twitter at chrisabraham. You can find me at garriscorp.com, G-E-R-R dot I-S. Uh, you can find me at linkedin.com slash in slash chrisabraham. You can find me on No Agenda Social at Chris. And uh, you can reach me via text at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one, or you can call me at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. But if I don't recognize your call, it's going to voicemail. Anyway, thank you. I hope you don't think that I'm the most uh, calloused person in the entire world, but I am fifty after all. I, I deserve it. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.